does NASCAR need a cost cap? Earlier this week, NASCAR put out the list of drivers who sold the most merch at NASCAR tracks in 2023. And while there is a couple of interesting names on there, nothing was a real shock other than the fact that Dale Earnhardt sold more merch in 23 than Denny Hamlin did, who's still actively racing, and Dale hasn't raced in 22 years. That didn't stop him from being in the top 10 on the most sold diecast list that Lionel put out this week as well. So Lionel put out a list of the top 10 diecast in 2023. And while there's an interesting name on there at number two, which is a big surprise, the rest is pretty standard, except for the fact that Dale Earnhardt, again, who hasn't raced in 22 years, outsold Chase Elliott, NASCAR's most popular driver for the sixth straight year in the Cup Series, in 2023 in terms of diecast sales, which is just crazy when you think about it. I saw somebody in the comments about the top 15 drivers merch that was like, oh, they release all the Dale Earnhardt diecasts, he'd, so he'd sell out the top 10. Well, not necessarily true, but he did crack the top five, which is still absolutely wild for a guy that, again, hasn't raced in a really long time, two decades at this point. There are seniors in college that never saw Dale Earnhardt race, which is absolutely unfathomable <laughs> at some point. Obviously, time works and continues to go on, but it is still kind of crazy. So Lionel put out this top 10 list. Let's get into it real quick. Number one on the list is Kevin Harvick's number 29 Bush Light throwback scheme that he ran at the All-Star Race at North Wilkesboro earlier this year. Shout out to RCR, SHR, and Bush coming together to make sure that this could get done. It was really cool to see, and it's always interesting when drivers switch out of their current number and run a different number, like when Jimmy Johnson ran the five at the All-Star Race. But it's cool to see Kevin Harvick get to run that number 29 once again, right? It was iconic. It was the number after Dale. It kind of closed the chapter, right? It closed the book for a lot of people. The whole Dale Earnhardt saga and his replacement sort of came to an end. Seeing this scheme on track, though, also reminded me of like how much better Kevin Harvick probably could have been in terms of records if he would have left Richard Childers Racing earlier, and that kind of bummed me out. But at the end of the day, this was a really good paint scheme. I'm super glad that they got to run it, and of course it was number one on the list. Number two on the list is a massive surprise. It is Eric Jones's number 43 Guns N' Roses car. I yeah, I'm just as confused as you are until I remember that there are a ton of baby boomers out there that absolutely love 80s big hair rock music. And that's what this was. They all went out there and bought it. Guns N' Roses has a rabid fan base. They're, again, like Taylor Swift fans. They're just old white dudes for the most part. And they absolutely want to have everything that has Guns N' Roses on it. Unless, of course, like Axel bought all of them so that they would sell out and then he could feel better about himself. Could possibly play a factor right there. But it would be pretty cool to see Slash have one of these or 12 of them on his shelf. Either way, seeing Eric Jones at number two was a big surprise. And somebody was commenting on that top 15 list earlier and was like, oh, I'll never see a legacy driver be in the top 15. You might not see it in total merch sales, but you do get to see it in terms of most diecast sales for the season. Number three is Kyle Busch's race win from the Fontana race, that Lucas Oil paint scheme that he ran. It was, of course, his first win in a Chevy since 2007, the spring Bristol race that year when he got out and famously said these cars suck in the first COT race. And if for him, he also shut down the racetrack. So maybe there's something that plays in the factor of that. People being like, oh, I want to have the die cast from the last race at Fontana or Daytona if you're a big Ford versus Ferrari fan. Either way, Kyle Busch being number three, kind of a surprise, but also him not being one of those cheating Yoders anymore definitely had to play a factor. Number four was Ryan Blaney's NASCAR Cup Series championship car. And it was just really impressive, the fact that this just went on sale like a month and a half ago, and it was shot up to number four on the list. I guess Ryan Blaney fans finally got out of the bathtub. They're feeling pretty good about themselves, and they're spending a lot of money on championship merch. So shout out to Blaney. At least he gets one in the top ten. Number five is Dale Earnhardt's 25th anniversary of his 1998 Daytona 500 win. Again, kind of a surprise to me that he's in the top 10 right here. Obviously, there's a ton of legacy fans out there. There's a ton of Dale Earnhardt fans, and everybody wants to have their hands on something Dale Earnhardt related. But to continue to sell this many die casts 22 years later is just kind of crazy. Do you think that they're going to have a 25th anniversary of Austin Dillon's 2018 win in the Daytona 500? Absolutely not. I don't know why I even asked the question. But Dale Earnhardt continuing to move merch like the absolute cash cow that he is. It's the honeypot for NASCAR. Teresa Earnhardt just continues to line her po pockets of Dale Earnhardt merchandise and all the money that comes from it. 
Number six is the 75th anniversary of NASCAR commemorative car. Makes a lot of sense why it's on the list. Fans want to have a diecast like this, right? It commemorates one of the big seasons in NASCAR. It's a milestone the same way that they did this for the 50th season as well. Granted, somebody in 1998, the Hendrick team, did switch their number to the number 50 for the entire season, which was cool, but also odd at the same time. A number of different drivers rotated throughout that car. Nobody did it in 2023 with the number 75, which honestly would have been kind of cool. But at the same time, I get why they didn't do it. You need to have some of that separation of church and state in a sense right there. And it definitely would not have been good if Hendrick Motorsports was like, oh, we'll run the 75 for you, NASCAR, because people already think NASCAR favors them over everybody else. Number seven is Shane Van Gisbergen's race win from the Chicago street course, right? He came over and won in his first NASCAR Cup Series start, which is definitely something that I think a ton of people want to commemorate and remember because we'll probably never see it again, more likely than not, unless Cam Waters comes over and does it in 2024 with RFK. But for SVG to come over and do it, it was really cool. First win on, first NASCAR race ever on a street course, first win in NASCAR for him. Very cool. You also throw in the fact that you have New Zealand and Australia paying a lot of attention to his win there as well. Yeah, he was going to move a ton of die cast. Number eight is Chase Elliott's standard Napa paint scheme on his Camaro. It makes a lot of sense. NASCAR's most popular driver. Of course, he's going to move that die cast basically every single year you're going to see this car on the list. I do wonder if like, did Josh Berry fans or Corey LaJoy or Jordan Taylor fans buy this car to also commemorate the fact that their driver raced in the Cup Series in that car in 2023? Maybe it was a bit of like a rotating cast, like a traveling theater group, right? I don't know where that came from, but Chase Elliott being on the list makes sense. Number nine is Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s number three Bass Pro Shops late model. Again, not a shock to see Dale Earnhardt Jr. on the list. Maybe it is a bit of a surprise to see the late model, but it's because of the fact that Lionel finally went out there and got an actual mold, an actual die to create the correct die cast of the late model. Not that Frankenstein thing that they tried to push a last year or the year before where they took like a standard mold and were like, oh, we'll just kind of mess with the note. No, can't do it. You have to go out there and get the actual car. You have to make it look like the actual car. And they went ahead and did that. And now they're going to sell a ton of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Uh, late models, which is pretty cool to see. And Dale, I think, was a big champion behind the scenes to make sure that this got done. So shout out to him for making sure it got done because it's definitely cool to see something that you typically don't see diecast in diecast form rather. And number 10, to cap off his final season in the NASCAR Cup Series, Kevin Harvick appears on the list for the second time. He cap ends both ends of this list here. The number four Budweiser Mustang that he ran, a throwback to his 2014 paint scheme as well. It looks a bit wonky with the number moved up now. There's kind of a lot of empty space right there on the door, but it's still cool to see. It's an iconic paint scheme. And um, just imagine if he continued that run that they had in like 2014 and even like 2015 with that paint scheme, if they could have been that good over the course of his time at SHR, would have been like a legendary run for the most part right there. So that is the list of the top 10 die cast. Let me know in the comments, does anything surprise you? Are you surprised that somebody else didn't make it on here? Honestly, there's a couple that I was a little bit surprised by, like the McDonald's cars that they ran at Homestead uh, for both Bubba Wallace and Tyler Reddick between the Hamburglar and Grimace. Kind of surprised those weren't on here, but they did also have a pretty late you know, uh, announcement date that you could pre-order those, so that could have played into it as well. And then uh, I guess that's really probably the only ones where I'm like, oh, I wish those would have been on the list or surprised they weren't on the list for the most part. So let me know in the comments what you're surprised by. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.